A transmembrane protein need not only have a single helix. Here's an example of one. And this particular structure is typical of pores in membranes. Remember we talked about nuclear pores. There are pores in the plasma membrane and other membranes that are there to allow the flow of substances across the membrane. This is an example of how that structure would be formed. Take a look at this protein. Imagine what a hydrophobicity plot of one polypeptide might look like. First of all, they're going to be in the hydrophobicity plot, uh, not one, but several peaks that represent hydrophobic regions. But in this case, each of those regions that represent largely hydrophobic amino acids that are above the zero line, if you go back to that hydrophobicity plot, each of them are not going to be exclusively hydrophobic, are they? Why? Because water exists in the aqueous pore in this illustration, so there are going to be amino acids in these helices that are hydrophilic, and they are the ones that are going to face the interior of the pore. So you can imagine that a hydrophobicity plot is going to be a bit more complex than what you saw in the example I gave you.